In this episode, the topic is quality family time. And this is for business owners who work all the time and, well, they don't get a lot of time to spend with family. In fact, statistics show that the average family only spend about 37 minutes together and that's 37 broken minutes on a daily basis combined they add up to a little over six hours of family time that's called quality family time outside of that they're just moving around this contributes to many other factors that can clearly be avoided one of those factors is the breaking down of the family here in florida people get divorced called a no-fault divorce we just grew apart we got married to the job and we divorced our spouses and that becomes the norm over 60 percent the norm something's wrong with that picture and if you read about what's coming down the pipeline well, this year is the, 20, the, the 2024, and there's a project that's a bill called Project 2025. If this is passed, then you can just kiss the whole idea of family and throw it out the door. But that's a topic for another time. What we're going to talk about is what is happening with quality family time. How is this being affected by business and can we make better choices? Do we really have to choose between more profits and quality family time? Is it possible to have both together in one setting? This and more. We're going to take a break and mention our sponsors. We have My Sister's Keeper with their event coming up. And let's spotlight that for a second. So they have that event coming up in October 26. October 26, that's something that you want to get prepared for is what they call a, a cash mom. Never heard of a cash mom before until it was brought to my attention. So this cash mom is going to support a local business. And in doing so, if you're in the area, drop by. Let them know that Samuel F. Robinson from Embracing AI Lifestyles sent you. All right, let's get back to where we're going here so I wanted to highlight something I actually documented it so I'm going to present it to you now and let's switch back over here got you all right I was giving you some statistics earlier and I didn't just pull this out of the air I'm actually pulling research from various centers Backyard Oasis and Pew Research to let you know that this isn't an old study. This is something fairly new. And let's see if we can, uh, let's do this. All right. Now, I also mentioned that 37 minutes a day. Um, shout out to Stephanie Thomas from posting this article that I was able to just take a snippet off just to bring it to you. Depression versus peace of mind. Materialism leads to depression. And this happens because of bad or old-fashioned traditions that really don't align with evergreen principles and for those who are believers yes I'm talking the Bible understand that 
if you focus on the material stuff, then what happens is that you lose the human side. You're supposed to use money and love people. You don't use people and love money. People say that money is evil. No, money is not evil. When you sacrifice human beings, relationships for money, that's evil. Of course, some people look at it in several different ways. So let me point out something to you. When we talk about, when, we, when you mention the root of money, the, the, the love of money is a root of evil. I want to unpack that for a second. When you have too much money, you worry about losing it. And when it gets to a point, when it becomes your idol, then you're willing to do anything. So any perceived danger requires a violent response in order to keep what you're afraid of losing. Let me say that on the opposite spectrum. When, it, when you don't have money, you desire it most. When it has become your idol, then you'll do anything to get it, inclu including sacrificing your morals, sacrificing family members. I'll tell you a story. I knew a person that the mother died, left the siblings. One of the siblings took the inheritance and sold it, took the money and ran, leaving all the siblings that was actually living in the mansion. They had to leave the mansion because it was sold from underneath them and they had no place else to go. Fast forward a few years, that family member got sick and the same people that he left in the streets had to take him in and nurse him until he eventually passed. That's an example of making money an idol, whether you have a lot or whether you have none. Let's move on to the next fact. Relationships equal happiness. I'm going to start from business relationships. When you have your vendors and you treat them right, you have good relationships with your vendors, they treat you right. Now, of course, you're going to say, oh, not everybody's the same. I'm not talking about every single person. And I'm talking about those with whom you have a reciprocal relationships with. Let's move that closer to home. When it comes to your family, your family is not your burden. In the old days, you'd hear the term, my ball and chain, which refers to the spouse. Uh, if you speak in that tone, then you will live out that tone, it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. When it comes to relationships, and I'm going to go even further back. For those who look at Evergreen Principles, back in Genesis, in the good book, it talks about God creating a woman out of Adam's rib. Now we can debate the rest of that later. Here's my point. He called her a helper. Called her a help me. When you look at the original Hebrew, and I should have written it down, it's easy E-R, Hazer. It's not what you think. Most people think that the woman is supposed to be subservient. The woman is supposed to be weaker. It, that's not what it means at all. In fact, if you read further on into scripture, God refers to 
himself in the form of the Holy Spirit as a Hazir, a helper. So are you saying that God is subservient or weak? Come on. Think about it. The word, and I want you to go and I should have put it in there. It means strength. The woman is the man's strength. And for those who hang around me, hi, my name is Samuel F. Robinson, in case you don't hang around me. And this is the Embracing AI Lifestyle podcast. Back to the topic at hand. You've heard me said, or you, one of the things I normally say is the man makes the woman and the woman makes the man. Let me unpack that for you. The woman came out of the man's rib. The words from the woman's mouth forms the man. What she says to him can cut like a knife, like as a hammer and a chisel to a stone. You'll get that rewind and unpack that. The man makes the woman, the woman makes the man, and together they make the family. Whenever the man is missing from the home, then the woman has to play both roles. Whenever the woman is missing from the home, then the man has to play both roles. It's a it's not a good situation for the kids either way. I'm not saying that you should stay in a relationship where you're physically being abused. Obviously, you need to exit that relationship, get some safety, and surround yourself with people where we believe, I believe, that it takes a village to raise a child in the same way it takes a community to protect the nuclear, the core, the family. Now you keep your extended family extended. They don't need to be all up in your business, to use the American colloquial language. Understand that when it comes to when it comes to understanding how that part works in terms of business. I started with business and then I continued on to relationships. I'm going to show you how both of them fit together. And it's not what you think. But let's continue. I have more I want to share before I run into the rest here. So here's a challenge. Which is better? Should you focus more on making money because your spouse says that they've got to buy clothes, they've got to feed the family? Or do you focus on the family and sacrifice the money because happy wife, happy life? The challenge is not balance. And most people think it is. It's not the answer is not balance. And let's let's dive into that a little bit. Imagine that you have a seesaw, you have business on this side making profits, and you have family on this side bringing stability. And you're attempting to balance. There's only 24 hours in a day, and eight of eight hours of them you're sleeping. So, are you saying that? Eight hours you're focused here, and then the other eight hours you're focused here. Where would you get time to do anything else? I just showed you this statistic. So there is no such thing as balance. Because if you're only getting 37 minutes in the day, what happened to the rest of the 24 hours? And if you're only getting that for the week at 168 hours a week, where's your family time? All right, let's dive into a book that I read. I haven't had a chance to meet him in person yet, but I, su I surmise I will get a chance to meet him in person. All right, let's look at this. 
what's the solution? Here, here, here's a hint. Daniel Rabbi Lapine. Let me put my image down here. I used to say the six F's, seven F's, and after getting a better explanation on the five F's, everything fits within the five F's, but it's not balance, it's alignment. That's what we're talking about. So the solution is alignment. Your faith obviously comes first. You need your vertical relationship so that you can have balancement in your horizontal relationships. So your faith being first, your family comes next. Now, he has this reverse where finance comes next. My opinion, fitness comes next. Now, I understand that because of the way he has it laid out, finance incorporates so much more than what you might be thinking in terms of money in the bank. Finance, it broadens to business, anything surrounding money. My thing is your fitness if you can't walk, you can't breathe properly. If you can't do the, I believe it's, if I remember correctly, it's the six basic functions, countenance, bathing, uh, feeding. If you can't do the, the basic stuff on your own, it, it's a challenge to do everything else. So that's why I put fitness. You've got to have the mental acuity in order to do what you need. Faith encompasses that aspect of because faith is just not your relationship with your creator. It's all the parts that are non-physical. Of course, the bridge between the two is fitness. Now, you come down to finance. When it comes to finance, you're talking your business, you're talking... My AC is about to kick on. And we'll turn it off. Now, when it comes on to friends, it's friends are the, and, and I should have written friendships. Friends, friendships are the relationships that I hinted on earlier with the vendor. The relationships that you enjoy you need alignment in these areas but there's it's impossible to attempt to bring balancement into it now there's a way in my opinion and i could be i'm telling you i'm not the only solution but in my opinion when it comes to alignment one way to achieve alignment is to build subscription-based communities. You build your business, you create the value, and then you build a subscription base, whether you write a book, whether you deliver content that expires every 30 days. So it's, it's, it becomes a more or less like a utility type product or a type of product that people want, need on a recurring basis. And you position yourself in that income flow, scale it to where the bigger it scales, the more time you have to invest with family. Yes, I said invest because the payoff is legacy. Understand that with legacy, and I go back to the story I shared earlier, which was a true story, by the way. Had, had you, if you invest in your kids and their kids, as it's written in the, in the good book, you'll find that this activity allows them to turn around and take care of you. 
We live in a generation now that we call the sandwich generation. I'm going to wrap up with this. The, the kids are taking care of the parents and taking care of their kids. And all the stress is on them. The least financially prepared parents create a stronger burden on the kids and their kids watch this and carry that burden into their marriage. I remember a situation where a woman got married to a man and because of culture the way that the culture taught she couldn't fully enjoy the marriage she reverted back to mimic her mom same abuse i was at an event recently and i was listening to three ladies speak about trauma that they experienced and how it created a cycle that they experienced when they were growing up. They decided not to go in it, and then they found themselves playing the same role that their parents played. When you invest in creating a positive environment for your kids, and you teach them how to have a vertical relationship, not just vertical awareness. And I'm going to stop there. We'll dive into that aspect of it a little bit more at another time. I want you to understand that family quality time is important and it should not be at the mercy of profits. This is Samuel F. Robinson and to the supporters I will list you in the in the show notes and see you in the next episode. I endeavor to do it this more often, but we'll see. If you act, I'll produce. Thank you.